Everyone, it's Ross, and in today's video, I'm gonna be direct seeding a lot of annual vegetables today. I think a lot of you guys on my channel specifically really love fruits and really love the fact that I'm growing a lot of fruits, and that's kind of why you watch the channel. But there's a lot of joy in growing vegetables that I didn't realize until a few years in of growing food. Um, I really think that if you're new to this, you should be growing a lot of annuals and a wide variety. Really try to try to grow a whole bunch of wide variety of different things. I think you're really going to be rewarded by the end of the season. I think it's going to really make a lot of sense because you got these really young trees when you first start out, really young perennials, and they take a bit to get going. Whereas annuals, you can put them in the ground, even direct seed them like we're going to do today, and you can get a full crop that year so i think it's really rewarding and really um it just makes more sense so i would really like if a lot of you guys as my viewers would focus more on vegetables especially this time of the year we are about a month and a week away from our last frost or our average last frost today's march 24th so this is a really good day really good time of the year to be focusing on our spring crop and this is great because things like our peaches and our stone fruits and our apples and our pears you know they're waking up right a lot of our perennials are waking up but the earliest thing that I'm gonna be able to harvest here from a perennial is my strawberries I believe at least in terms of fruit and the strawberries uh, they'll happen at the end of May so but that's pretty far away okay so we still got till the end of May we're talking two months, and that's two months of nothing. And that just really, really stinks because for me, I'm out here and I'm looking around, I'm thinking, oh God, spring has started. This is awesome, but it's gonna be two months before I get to even eat anything. So why would I wait until my perennials really get going? I should be focusing on, out of all of the vegetables, when to do this, I think now is the perfect time because there's a spring crop, there's a summer crop, and there's a fall crop, right? Depending on when you guys seed, depending on what you're growing, um, this is the best one of the three, I think. Because even if you didn't grow many annual vegetables, at least you do this now. And it gives you a lot of food early in the season, rather than getting a lot of it later in the season. And you just have too much, you can't eat it all, you don't know what to do with it. Um, you know, not that that's a bad thing, but I'd rather have it all spread out. And the vegetables you can grow now, some of them you can't grow any other time of the year. So it's like either you do this now or you don't get it. You know what I mean? It just, it just makes a lot of sense from my point of view. And hopefully I've convinced you at this point for if you're one of those people, like I said, that watches my videos mostly for the fruit. Today we're going to be planting snap peas, okay? Now, I'm going to show you how to do the other vegetables as well, but that's really what we're going to focus on in this video is the snap peas. Largely because the snap peas are so goddamn tasty. They're my favorite annual vegetable, and I can only really get them to work in the spring. I've tried in the fall, and it didn't really work out too well. Things got too cold too fast. I may try again this year, but... Um, I'm not really looking, not really very hopeful for it. What you can see down here is some snap peas that we started indoors. We transplanted these out last weekend. So these guys are doing real well. Um, we've had a lot of wind that came in here and they're not looking the best. But other than that wind, they're looking really great. And I should get a crop I'm expecting off of these guys maybe in like three weeks if things really warm up. This is the earliest variety, or one of the earliest varieties. It's called Sugar Ann. You can see that there on the, on the uh, seed packet. Sugar Ann is really a top-notch variety. I love that thing. I love them. They're just, they're really great. Right, we also have some here underneath the row cover. I don't know if you guys can make this out, but they're kind of getting smushed underneath there. And this row cover here is really just supposed to insulate this, keep this whole thing warm. But I think they're actually it's actually causing more harm than good. I'm not really liking how this whole row cover has uh, turned out. 
a lot of the uh, smaller vegetables that we transplanted really didn't come out so well you can see them kind of in this area they're really not looking too good now I'm gonna have to come in here I think and as a little bit of insurance is direct seed a lot of things that I had transplanted and that really stinks but you know we learned our lesson hopefully we're gonna learn at least something from this whole process and I want to put you guys down here because we're gonna direct seed this here and I would just want to show you really quickly a couple things here okay so we got our snap piece ideally what you should have done even though I didn't I'm not even gonna use gloves for this is that we should have soaked pre-soaked the seeds you don't do this with every seed but I think like lots of beans and lots of peas this is definitely beneficial what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take two seeds and I'm gonna just stick them in the soil here that's literally it. I'm gonna space them about four inches apart. I'm not even gonna cover it up. I'm just gonna say, you're on your own. And by having these two snap peas per hole, they're gonna actually support each other and really they're able to grow very close together, believe it or not. Um, and that's really the beauty of these snap peas. They have these little tendrils that help them support each other. You don't need a trellis for these. These are low growing. These, uh, these peas do not get really that large. They'll probably get about three feet tall at most, this particular variety. And overall, I'm just in love with this, this whole um, crop as a whole. I'd like to grow other, other snap peas, or other types of peas, I should say because there's different types. There's some here, like we're looking at, where you eat the pod and the pea as well, all in one. And then there's some other peas where you're gonna eat just the pod. And then there's some other ones where you just eat the pea. So uh, for me, I think the ones that you can eat the whole thing are just superior. That's what I'm growing here, is the sugar snap pea. They really do have a crazy amount of sugar in them for a vegetable, I think. Probably more than carrots, if I had to guess. But you can see in here, that's literally all I'm doing. We put this in there in the hole, and that's it. Um, with these, it doesn't even really matter how deep you do. Because I have such a good germination rate with these, that it's crazy. Um, now let me show you guys, I'm going to put the snap peas aside for a second. I'm going to get something else out. We're going to plant that. Um, I'm going to do a row of carrots. So let me show you guys with the carrots. So we'll give the snap peas a reasonable amount of space here. And we'll do some carrots. I'll say we'll give the snap peas about uh, four or five feet. And then we'll just, we're just gonna make with our hori hori here. We're gonna bring back the rice holes in this bed. And we're gonna make a trench. And that's it. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill this trench in with the carrots. I'm sure a lot of you guys know how to do this. But I wanna, I wanna make this real obvious that this is really really simple okay look at this we're just scattering them in this trench I don't really you know pay attention to the numbers if you really want you got you don't have as much seed carrots I think can go real close together and they'll grow very well closely um, some will actually push themselves away in a, in a sense so that some will get big and then once they get big I harvest the big ones and then once the uh, large ones have finished and come out of the ground then you go in for the small ones and the small ones take over that space and then they get big and you just keep doing that process over and over and over again. 
I think there's great joy, guys, in seeding your own vegetables, okay? Starting them all from seed yourself, there is so much joy in that. Again, I don't know if the camera can pick up the amount of seed that we're putting in this area. But it's not too much, it's not too little. Per pinch is probably about seven seeds. And I want these real close. I want them dense. I don't like scattered carrots, personally. And now what we're gonna do because we just seeded this, both of these rows, let's just lightly cover this. Now, the soil is moist. Now, th this is the most important thing about this whole thing. To make this zero work, because this is zero work, I just took some seeds, scattered them in the thing. How long did that take me? No time at all. Now, what maintenance is there? None. There's absolutely no maintenance. I don't water, I don't do a damn thing because I've basically prepared this bed successfully. And I've done this because I wanna be successful. I wanna have good success. Now, all we had to do when we created this, we've made many videos on this now. And you can see this is a bed that's a bit older. We've put down compost. The same stuff I use in my containers, I put in these raised beds, is I just add just natural potting soil, just natural soil conditioner, which is 50% compost, 50% pine bark mulch. You add about four inches of that stuff, and that creates, no matter where you live, probably the best medium to be growing vegetables in, okay? Now if you got that, you can add in some mulch if you want. You can see we've done that here with the rice holes. That's also gonna add some nice silica. We can also add in all different types of amendments. We've added plenty of amendments into this bed in the, uh, in the fall. We need to come back in here. We're probably gonna add more compost to this location. We're gonna amend the soil. This guy, we also should add maybe some organic fertilizer. But other than that, we're totally fine. And again, no work is gonna be necessary because I have this mulch. This mulch is gonna conserve all that moisture. We get 40 inches of rain. This compost holds plenty of water. Once, this, once the plants, because it's such a thin layer of compost, right? We're only talking about four inches. Once the roots of these plants get down into the native soil, that stuff's really, really good at holding water. So I really don't have any issues at all doing this. And I would recommend that you guys, when you're doing this and you're thinking about growing vegetables is that this is the most important part. Just like planting a fruit tree, planting it the right way and doing all these right, the, the right things from the beginning, picking out the best spot for these things is gonna make the world of difference. So, Anyway, guys, that is pretty much seeding vegetables 101, I think. Um, you can get real fancy with this and get some seeders. You can get some hand seeders. You can get all kinds of weird stuff. But there's nothing really that beats just getting in the soil with your hands, getting on your knees and doing this yourself, and then seeing the food grow, watching it grow, and then harvesting the food, um, and then eating the food. You will be immensely proud. You will, you'll feel this weird sense. You don't really know exactly what that is. But um, it really does just make a world of difference um, in how you feel. Um, everything. So I would just really strongly recommend that all of you guys out there who are thinking about having a garden this year, just get out there and do it. All right? Okay, guys, take care, and I will catch you all soon. Uh, check me out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter if you haven't. If you want to see more gardening videos besides the fruit ones, let me know. I want to know down in the comments if you do. Um, if you got this far, you haven't, you're not a subscriber yet, please subscribe. Like the video, um, you know, and I'll catch you all soon, all right? 
All right, guys, take care and uh, see you for tomorrow's video.